In anticipation of episode number 23 on vaginal bleeding in early pregnancy with Dr. Ross Claybo and Dr. David Dushensky, I've got here with us Dr. Ross Claybo, who's going to give us his best case ever. Ross, let it rip. Okay, I just want to remind you of 32 years, so I may have been a few best cases which I missed, but the one most recent that stands out in my mind is that of a young uh, primate who's 28 years old who um, had a pregnancy 18 weeks when she presented to the emergency department. And uh, she had been seen about two or three weeks earlier in the same emergency department in Toronto, had diagnosed an intrauterine pregnancy that was normal, viable, and had also been diagnosed with a coexistent fibroid uh, in the uterus. And the diagnosis at that time for her pain had been degrading fibroid, and she had been given a prescription for Percocet and followed up and she came in after 24 hours of severely increasing pain in the same area arrived in the department young as i said primate woman of pakistani origin had been taking percocet regularly with normal vital signs saturations but with the extremely tender uterine fundus when i examined her and this was just in the infancy of our ultrasound skills. But uh, I remember having a learner on with me. We, we went with the ultrasound probe and we did a quick bedside ultrasound. And we found free fluid in Morrison's pouch and the left upper quadrant. But we also at the same time saw what looked like a normal 17-week intrauterine pregnancy with a beating heart and actively moving. Patient uh, continued to require huge doses of narcotics, asking constantly for morphine, fentanyl that we were giving to the emergency department. Her vitals didn't fluctuate very much, maybe at most went down to about 97 systolic in her systolic uh, blood pressure. Blood work didn't help very much. Uh, beta was appropriate for 52,000 for that stage of pregnancy. White count a little bit elevated, which is again normal for that stage of pregnancy. At the time, I wasn't as confident with my ultrasound skills. I sent her for a formal one, and they diagnosed, again, a live intrauterine pregnancy with, quote, ascites. I was pretty convinced from my exam that this wasn't ascites, that this was something going on that looked clinically like a uterine rupture, which we know doesn't usually happen in a primate patient and is a very rare occurrence by itself. Actually, seen by gynecology first who came down and thought, no, it can't be that because the ultrasound is so definitive, both the current formal ultrasound and the one three weeks prior, that this is a intrauterine pregnancy. They thought it must be something surgical, maybe vascular crisis or a ruptured appendix is what their presumptive was. Patient went to the OR and a surgeon went in and initially looked at the case, opened up the person's belly and saw normal appendix, but a, a large clot on top of the fundus of the uterus and a large sac attached to it in the back, which had been a ruptured interstitial pregnancy, misdiagnosed in two separate visits. I gathered the ultrasounds and I keep them in my storehouse of ultrasounds because this patient, uh, even though they had the misleading appearance of an intrauterine pregnancy with a large fibroid pressing down on it, even the initial ultrasound showed a lack of protective myometrium around the pregnancy. And as we teach in our ultrasound courses in Canada, you have to have at least five millimeters of myometrial protection with a pretty centrally looking pregnancy to be absolutely sure this is a normal pregnancy. Uh, this person had much less, and we even use a larger standard in the emergency department, perhaps 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters as a safe sheath of myometrium. This person's head was basically right adjacent to their bowel in the original ultrasound. And it was at uh, the institution involved was the latest stage rupture of an abnormal ectopic pregnancy uh, that they had had in their history and became a very celebrated case all around. So as no, not only is the ectopic pregnancy by definition the great masquerader, the interstitial version of that is the great masquerader of the great masquerader. So even more obscure, but much more lethal because of all these features. So. Right. Okay. So now that we've got you insecure about uh, ectopic pregnancy, in a week or two, we'll be releasing episode number 23 and give you everything you need to know about bleeding in early pregnancy.